To finish up this course, we are going to create a simple blueprint that you can spawn these characters and add ractals to them. And I'm just going to show you really simply how you can randomize the values of this material that we created. First off, we're going to create a blueprint for our character, which is going to be an actor. You can name it BP character. And in here, I'm going to place it a bit better. Can delete this one. And you can add a skeletal mesh. This is what we've been doing for quite a while now. And in the skeletal mesh, you can select the character that we imported, which we named character. Now, this actor, we can place it in the world. And as you can see, it does become placed. And we can delete this placeholder that we put in our world. What we would like to do is that when this actor starts playing in the event begin play, we want to start the simulation of the physics. And to do that, you can just drag this uh, skeletal mesh to the event graph. And from it, we will say set simulate physics. And we say, going to say to true. Now, directly, if we play, we will see that it doesn't work. The reason for that is that the collision for our skeletal mesh is not set up correctly yet. So we should go under the details of the skeletal mesh and instead to say that we don't want a collision, we want to say that we want a ragdoll. Now, if we play again, you will see that it falls apart. Now that our physics are working, we could add an impulse to our skeletal mesh because it just flops <laughs> over the floor. And we can add impulse within our skeletal mesh. And what this is going to do is that if now we apply, let's say, a force of 3000 units, and we try to see what that's going to do. There's nothing. That's great. Because I think we need to say the velocity should change. And now you see that it flies upwards. In Unreal, the Z axis is this blue one, and that's what makes it go upwards. And if we would like to add a little bit of randomization, we could call a random vector unit. And this is going to give us a vector that is randomized between 0 and 1 of the three axes. And with this, we could say we want to multiply it because, as you can see, this unit's 3,000. It's quite high. So if we just give it a number of 0 to 1, it's not going to do anything. We could multiply it by a float. So you can right click here and say, I want to multiply by the float, for example, and we're going to multiply it by 1,000. And we could add a specific vector. So let's say we always want to have a relevance that it wants to go upwards. So we could add 2,000 units on the z-axis. So it will be a little bit randomized, but most of the times it will always go up. So let's see how that works. You can see now it goes a bit to that side and now it goes over here. Now, as I showed at the beginning, I'm using a key to spawn them and spawn a lot of them. And this is being triggered when the begin play of this blueprint, the procedural character, enters the world, basically. So the begin play activates and then it generates this uh, effect. What we want to do is to create a controller so that we can generate that instead. To do that, I'm going to get rid of this character and this blueprint, and we're going to add a volume trigger. And here, I think if we go to volume, we could get a trigger volume. And right now, I don't see anything because I pressed the G. And G is going to hide the elements within our world. And in that way, it was a bit cleaner. But this outline, you will not be able to see it if you have it like that. So just note that maybe you had it visible already, but I didn't. And we're going to use this volume as our spawning area. So we can put it a bit up. And maybe here we can change the size, if I remember correctly. So here we can say we want it a bit less high. And we want that we want to trigger a random point within this box with this volume. And the character will just fly away from that point. And it, otherwise, we could make it a bit smaller as well. So this is up to you to choose how you want to make your character fly away. Now we're going to need the controller, so we're going to create a blueprint, just going to get a pawn, make it really simple. We're going to 
name it BP control and we can open it and here I'm going to add a camera this is the camera we are going to use to be able to observe the scene and we can drop it again in here just again to iterate with the idea of the G button it hides all these billboards and all these external actors uh, that will basically show you while you are working I see here it's fighting in the Z index so I'm just going to bring my floor a bit up it's bothering me a little bit and now I want to have this PP control as the main camera that we spawn as when we begin play. You can do that if you get to the PP control, you select it, and you can call the process. Um, you can search it here. And what we want is to have the auto process player to player zero, which in our case will be us. So when I play, I will be the camera, as you can see. And then I'm going to jump back into the blooping control, into the event graph. In here, we need a reference of this volume box that we created. So we can create a variable and we can call it volume. We want it to be a type of actor. And get the first one, say it as an actor, and just compile. And what we can do then in the editor is to close the search and check for our um, variable that we should make editable otherwise we cannot do that so here you have a tiny eye you can just click it and now we have access to this variable outside the blueprint and in this case you see here that indeed in our default settings we have the volume and what i want to pick is this uh, volume we created so you can see here you can just pick it this is a trigger volume and what that's going to do is going to give us a reference of the volume within the blueprint control we just created now i can come here and i can reference it and it will have the volume as the reference. Now let's check if we can spawn the character we created within this control blueprint. What we can do is to look for a spawn um, actor from class. Then we're gonna actually, we don't wanna do it in begin place, so I'm gonna delete this event. I'm gonna press here um, to check for an event of a keyboard. So we're gonna say key one, and here you can have like specific events. If you scroll down, you have keyboard event number one. So when we press the number one, we want to spawn actor from a class. In this case, the class, we called it procedural character. So you can search it here. I'm going to say procedural character. If you compile, it's going to give you an error because we are not specifying at what point we want to spawn this character. So it is not going to work. What we could do is to get the position of our volume. So we could say get the actor location. And then we are going to split this transform pin. So we have the location, rotation, and scale. And then we're just going to get the location of the volume. And we're going to say when we press one, spawn the character at the location of the volume. We'll go back. And if we play it, and I press one, you can see that it's already spawning. It's quite noticeable though that they are spawning all from the same location. So we are not really using the, the specific volume area. To change that, we should go back here. And instead of getting the actor location, which is one single vector, and I can demonstrate it if I click within the volume, it's at this exact position. This is the location of our volume. Instead, what we want is to get the bounds. So we want to get the actor bounds. And this is going to give us the box, the bounding box, so the area that it's green. In this case, what do I want to get then? I want to get a random point in the bounding box. And you can see here that it, it needs a center, which is this location, and the box extent. And you can plug it here. And now this will give us a random point within the area of the box. So if we play again, and I press one, you see that now it appears throughout the box. You could also visualize that if you want, you can draw debug. Um, maybe we can draw a box. And now we will be able to see as well what point we just selected. So the center is going to be this random point. And actually, this is not going to work if we do it like this, because it's going to call the random function twice for the draw debug and the spawn actor. The best way would be to promote this as a variable and say the random position and now it will be stored once and we're going to use this reference for both 
because otherwise you will get two different values. So you can unplug it here and get the random position for the center and the location. The extent of the draw debug box, we can say 20 maybe, just leave it like that. You can check it with this purple color as well. Again, one duration of one, thickness of one. Now when we play, you will see that it's, it shows the location at which we are spawning the character. I am also seeing that the camera is a little bit zoomed in, in a way I don't like. I'm going to change the field of view to 65, somewhere there. And I think that's the same one I have in the viewport. So now it's a bit easier to change. If you don't have the, this field of view, you can change it here and you can set it to the number you want. Sometimes I just prefer to have the same one as the cameras I'm going to use so that what I see in the viewport is the same as what I'm going to see when I play. So now you can see that it's much easier to see. All that is left now is to apply the material and randomize certain values in order to get a randomized color in our character. Um, we are going to do that in the procedural character blueprint right here. And we could create a new event, but it's such a simple blueprint that we're just going to follow from here. So after it starts, we are going to create a new material. So literally, we are going to say we want to create a dynamic material instance. And we want to select the material that we created for the character. And just to remind it, it's called MI character. And then here, excuse me, here we can just type it my character. We are going to promote this to a variable. I'm going to name it the MI material. And this reference is the reference that we are going to use in order to store the material. And it actually is, has an issue because we don't have a target. And actually, we want to get it from the skeletal mesh. Now we are creating a material for this specific mesh. And let's just play, see everything works. Everything works fine. And you can see that already we have the, the material being applied. We could also, just for being sure, we can uh, set the material as well. I'm not sure if this is necessary because we already saw the material, but we can just make sure that it's using the dynamic one. Because now we are going to get the dynamic material and we are going to set specific scalar parameters. And this is going to allow us to change the, val the values that we created as parameters within the material when we were creating it. So I need to refresh my memory because I don't remember how we named it. But in this case here, you have the name that we need to type. For example, this one goes from 0 to 1. So we want a randomized value between 0 to 1 in this parameter called curve index primary. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say primary curve. I think I'm dyslexic because, yeah, it was the opposite, actually. Uh, curve index primary. It needs to be exactly as you type it, otherwise this is not going to work out. And what we want is to get a random float. And as it says here, it will return a value from 0 to 1, which is perfect for what we need. Just plug it in here and now see if it's actually setting this value when I press. So indeed, you see that there is a difference in shade between different characters. And now, because we have it like this, we could do the same. Just can copy, paste, get the same. Remember, this will trigger twice, so you will get two different values from this. And here, the secondary. Now, if we play, you can see that we are getting different in color. And what's left? Really, if you want, you could also set the metallic, the roughness, the specular. You could also play and check with different color curves so you can have more variations within your project. And this is really it. You really made it. Congrats. Maybe take away the draw debug. Not need it anymore. And it would be here. Take it away. And that would be the final result. Congratulations if you made it this far. This was 
quite a, <laughs> a topic. I've been working for it for a while now. And yeah, congratulations. This was it's quite a difficult concept to write. Yeah, wrap your head around. It took me a while. I, that's why I put some attention on developing the fundamentals of a character. There's a lot of things that, you know, this could be made different or that uh, you can improve. That's for sure. Always the case. But the goal is really to introduce like what the character really is, how it's made of, how you can bring it into Unreal, what things uh, you need to consider using Houdini and KineFX. And hopefully this can serve as an introduction for future references of how to animate a process like this, how do you create variations, how can you even automate further this process. And the project files for this uh, course are in the description. You can grab them. It will help to develop further parts of this course, as I have in mind, as I said, working on these animations, these top parts, etc. And it would help a lot for developing it further. Thanks a lot and see you next time.